any troops? Or should that be afternoon? You're late. Ned, I know I'm late. You're smug. But I'll be early tomorrow. You're stuck with it. <laughs> Manager should set an example to his staff. When I manage it here, things will change. They will. All the customers are late for a start. <laughs> Anything important been happening? Ned tried to ring head office to tell them you were late. Meek. I'll get you, race. What did they say? They were all late because of the tube strike. <laughs> Why are you late? David had an eye on my blouse. <laughs> and you can cut that out for a start. I was just thinking. I know you were. There's a large balloon just above your head with ha-ha written inside it. Now, sir, uh, get me yesterday's commodity prices. I want to look at metals. I'll get Ned to show you his braces. <laughs> Sorry. Have you asked head office yet whether I can have a company car? You've just been trying to drop me in it. Why should I? Well, because <clears throat> basically you're fair-minded and I'm not. Faced with somebody like me, a manager should exercise their managerial skills to cope with it. Is it five o'clock yet? It feels as though it ought to be. Perhaps you can't cope. Maybe you should resign. Let me be the new manager. That does have its attractions, Ned. Don't think it hasn't crossed my mind. Well, why do you do it then? Everybody would be much happier. Nobody likes women bank managers. Thank you. Goodbye, Ned. Uh, but into Braithwaite. Oh, hello, Barrington. Uh, yes. Yes, I should have something to show you quite shortly. <laughs> Fine. Goodbye. You're using your womanly wiles on him, aren't you? It's not fair. Maybe you should be using your manly wiles on me. Why has he gone green? I merely remarked that if he wanted to get on, maybe he should be using sex as a weapon. <laughs> You're disgusting, both of you. Oh, today has not begun well. It'll settle down, don't worry. At least you've got David back to work. There is that. Maybe it'll all be worth it in the end. Very nice. Yes, me, Braithwaite. Why? Sign here, will you? Oh. Thanks a lot, girl. Ah, there you are. I thought you'd have been here sooner. I wanted to have a word with you. My desk has gone. Has it already? <laughs> Porters are in the ball for once. Well, at least your word process has arrived. Now, that reminds me. Am I going to get a typist? Because I'd like to get started as soon as possible. What's going on? There are more votes in the environment than are in business, apparently. Well, I can't have got the sack. I haven't started yet. Come and have a coffee. Type those up and have them duplicated, will you? I'll, I'll hand them out at the conference. What does David think about you and Ratface Ricketts going away for the weekend together? Barrington Ricketts looks on me as a colleague, that's all. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> He's got nothing to worry about. I'm not worried. Who said I was worried? Sexual harassment went out with the suspender belt. It says here. I've got a suspender belt. They don't work. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Estelle's got one. They don't work. Well, maybe she's not fastening it up properly. Oh, no, they hold stockings up. That's not what I'm talking about. She got this magazine. <laughs> but there are places where I draw the line. Oh, yes. Women, you're all the same. As for you, I don't know why you even bothered to keep up the pretense. I really don't. I mean, everybody knows why you did it. To weaken my authority. Why I did what, Ned? Why you got your husband this job? I mean, you were afraid that everybody would recognize that I'm too good to be number two, so you decided to diminish me. Well, it won't work. I've complained to the union. <laughs> I think paranoia must be catching. I'm beginning to know how he feels. What? I'm beginning to wonder if Ricketts didn't deliberately create this job for David so that I would owe him one. <laughs> That's not paranoia. Please don't say that. This is something I want to be paranoid about. On the credit side, though. On the credit side, what? You do know what you have to do to keep Ricketts happy. One day, <laughs> I will murder you, Jessica. But remember, if the worst comes to the worst, you mustn't on any account enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> remember. What does David think about it? 
He thinks Ricketts is such a toad that there's absolutely no risk. He talks about the whole weekend with a merry chuckle. The top and the bottom of it all is that you'll just have to work from home for a little while. Now, let me get this straight. The council promised to provide an office for the business advice centre. That was only a week ago. So what happened? A week is a long time in politics. Is that all you can come up with? A meaningless aphorism? Yes. What, well, don't they like me? Have I got bad breath or something? Oh, bad breath's not a disqualification. Not in this council, anyway. <laughs> Actually, it's very close to an advantage in a debate. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> they went green, as in save the whale and hedgehog ladders. I think I'll go out and come back in again. I've obviously missed something. We are a hung council, which depends on the casting vote of the council chairman. And, he has decided, there is more mileage in apparently being concerned about the environment than there is in pretending to be worried about the lack of jobs in the district. So who's got my office, then? A Ms. Terry Smith. Oh, Terry. I know the type. Boiler suit and a spanner in the back pocket. Oh, that's <laughs> move your car. Miss Smith gets your parking space now, and you might get clamped. <laughs> No hard feelings. That's what you think. <laughs> there was a lot to be said for quill pens. Yes, and red ink. Red ink was good. You don't remember red ink, do you? My father told me about it. I never knew your father was a banker. He wasn't. Didn't stop him knowing all about red ink on bank statements, though. <laughs> ah. One of the reasons I married Estelle, as a matter of fact. How could red ink on your father's bank statement make you fall in love with Estelle? Who said anything about falling in love? <laughs> Messenger from head office brought this. Thank you. I expect it will be private. We don't know until you've opened it. <laughs> I've got a pretty shrewd idea. It'll be the joining instructions for the weekends as your father. I hope it's just... I hope it's just your, your vocabulary that's let you down and not your filthy mind. So, uh, put it in the back there, Lou, will you? Mm -hmm. So, the top and the bottom of it is I'm going to have to work from home until they can make some other arrangements. Well, that's all right. It'll be just like old times. I can pop in for a cup of coffee from time to time. To time, to time, to time. Oh, I... <laughs> Thank you and good night. Don't you want me to pop in and see you? Well, of course I do, Lou. It's just I was getting rather used to being an executive. Mm. It's rather difficult to be an executive surrounded by next-door neighbours. Mm. The ecological movement's got a lot to answer for. Anyway. I got my own back on the way home. Why? What did you do? I bought an aerosol deodorant. <laughs> I go buy one every day. And I'm having the car converted back to leaded petrol. <laughs> That'll teach them to mess with me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're like a little boy when you get like this. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are. Not. Are. Not. Are. Not. Are. Not. No, 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 no. <laughs> See? <laughs> Listen. Maybe you should practice being grown up for a bit. After all, you are going to be dealing with real people. Yes, you're right. And real problems. Things you can't just wipe up with a damp cloth. Mm. Now, I don't even know who's responsible for my salary. Well, maybe Belinda could uh, help you. Yeah. yeah, back to normal. Run to Mummy. Now, this time, I'm going to handle it for myself. What are you going to do? Do? I'll have a word with Charles. Charles? He's had more influence in this town than the bypass did. They never built the bypass. Right. <laughs> business. I'll get Jessica to do it. Fine. Bye. Do you want me to run home and get my suspender belt? <laughs> All jokes about sex, suspender belts and dirty weekends are forbidden in this bank from now on. Fair enough. What do you want then? You to do some typing overtime. Oh, why me? What have I done? Very little. All day. That's why you. <laughs> you need a whip and a rubber apron. <laughs> Nothing. Don't look at me like that. I didn't hear you say anything, and if I had, I wouldn't have understood a word. I mean, what would I have to do with rubber aprons, hmm? <laughs> Stop nodding when I'm not looking at you. <laughs> well, it seems fairly straightforward to me. But tell them you want an office. If they won't give you one, throw a wobbler. Right, Charles. Yeah, don't be sick on anyone there. Counterproductive. I don't want to be sick on anyone, Charles. Yeah, wise move. Wise move. You know, I've never been able to understand people who are sick on people. <laughs> uh, Charles, I don't even know who pays my salary. You don't? Yeah, meet me for a drink. I don't need a drink, Charles. You will when I tell you who does pay your salary. <laughs> what? This is pretty potent stuff, you know. 
Where? Which bit? What's wrong with that? A verbal or visual assault in a certain context can be as demeaning as rape in a different context. What's wrong with that? It's true. I like it. Really? Really? Truthful, honest, doesn't pull any punches. And it gives an unvarnished picture of the hazards that face any woman who goes out to work. Good. I thought I'd gone too far. I should add that I'm speaking as a woman. Ah. We really ought to try it on a man. Or maybe Ned would do. <laughs> Mr. Race? What? What do you want? Uh, would you do me a favour? No. <laughs> well, let me put it differently. Read this immediately and let me have your comments. What is it? It's a report for Mr. Ricketts. You know who Mr. Ricketts is, don't you? Of course I know who Mr. Ricketts is. He's the man who keeps coming in here and ignoring me and staring at your legs. Do you think I don't know what's going on? He doesn't stare at my legs, does he? He stares at all of you. The bits he can see, that is. What? The bits he can't see, he makes up. <laughs> well, maybe I should be, I should be more stern, less, less approachable. You're probably right. But why should I? Why should I have to be a battle axe? Because... Men mistake politeness for warmth, warmth for interest, and interest for an overwhelming desire to leap into the nearest bed. <laughs> Men are thick. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what do you mean the bank pays my salary? What bank? Um, uh... Belinda's bank, the mid counties Correct. Don't be ridiculous, Charles. It can't possibly be. Well, fine. I probably got it wrong then. <laughs> well, you know what I'm like with these things. Can I get you another glass? Belinda and I have no secrets. We tell each other everything. Are you sure that's wise? You have to remember your marriage, you know. With these things, disclosures can be very tricky. I mean, uh, suppose you get divorced. What about that? Belinda and I don't want to get divorced, Charles. You know, I've based a very successful lifestyle on a number of people with love in their hearts and flutterings in their underwear. <laughs> They weren't getting divorced either. Oh. Here's your latest pay packet. Ah, you lovely Louise. <laughs> Hi, guy. <laughs> Are you following me about? Yes. Why? I'm nosy. <laughs> David, you know I'm nosy. I've always been nosy. Why are you so surprised? Have you got anybody yet to go away with you on the weekend? Mm, no. I'm beginning to think my charms are fading. Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> a lot, boys. Oh, well, no, no I just... <laughs> Sounds like sympathy. Anyway, I'm going to meet someone now who might be able to help. I don't need you anymore. Who? Don't be nosy. <laughs> I hate it when women become independent, Charles. You didn't know I was a closet chauvinist, did you? Well, of course I did. You're a man, aren't you? How could you cope otherwise? I was joking, Charles. No, you weren't. Is my salary paid by Belinda's bank? Yes. I don't know how your husband got that job. I mean, all he's been doing is ironing for the last God knows how long. You can't just step into business life just like that, you know. You need to be hardened in the white heat of the marketplace before you can hold your own in today's cut-and-thrust world. Ned, and, uh, what? you sound like a yuppie. Do I? Do I? <laughs> oh, thanks. Jess? I'm the only woman going to this weekend conference. You're really worried about this, are you? I am, aren't I? I wonder, I, I've had to cope with sexual harassment in one form or another a hundred times throughout my career. But this time, I, I feel really threatened. Are you sure it's the same thing? I don't even like him. Scarlett O'Hara didn't like Rhett Butler. Oh, this is insane. I am a normal, healthy woman with a mind of my own. I am not a rabbit about to be transfixed by a snake. It's for you. Who is it? <laughs> Hello, Barrington. <laughs> oh, right, well, thanks a lot, Charles. It's a pleasure, dear boy. Yes. David? Uh, not at the moment, Louise. I'm in a bit of a hurry. David, I want you to meet my new friend. This is Teresa. Hello. Hello. What would you like to drink? Oh, I'll have a uh, half a bitter, please. I'll have a G&T. <laughs> He's married, Teresa. <laughs> you're married, David. Uh, would you mind getting Teresa half a bitter, Lou, and whatever you're having yourself? A brush off. <laughs> what? A brush off. That's what I'm having. <laughs> Good old Lou. Always in there with a merry little quip. I'll have half a pint of old peculiar, please, Lou. Uh, would you like to come and sit down, Teresa? In the alcove. It's a 
A bit more comfortable there. Yeah. So, uh, you're new in town? I am, as a matter of fact. I only arrived this morning. I met Louise at the CAB. Oh. I went to look for some accommodation until I get my own house fitted up. Oh, you must have arrived in a bit of a rush then. Yes, I did. There was a sudden change of plan by my new employer and they asked me to come over today. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. <laughs> I'm going to sit with Charles and talk about you two. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should join them. No, that's all right. Lou's all right. Well, she is my potential landlady. Well, you're going to be living with Louise? She did say she had a spare room. Well, that's splendid, isn't it? It will certainly solve a problem. Yes. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Not working, then? Well, I was due to start a new job at the town hall this morning, but when I got there, they'd given my office to somebody else. Ah. Oh. Did they say who they'd given the office to? Well, some horny-handed daughter of the soil, I imagine. <laughs> In a boiler suit with a green and common haircut and a spanner in her back pocket. <laughs> and she'll probably be wearing concrete knickers and no bra. <laughs> you know, they have given my office, which I hadn't even moved into yet, to their green department. And I'll tell you something else as well. Go on. Her name is Ms. Terry Smith. <laughs> Terry. Well, that ought to tell you something about her. <laughs> I see. Where are you going? To sit with Louise. Was it something I said? I knew the men out here in the sticks would probably be a little less than sophisticated. I didn't expect them to be Neanderthal. I'm Terry Smith. I'm the new green department. Oh. And by the way, I do wear a bra and my knickers are cotton, not concrete. <laughs> sex survey, are we? <laughs> or is it trivial pursuit this time? She's the one that's taken my office away. And your breath, too, by the look of you. For goodness sake, have a drink of beer. You look like a pound of undressed tripe. <laughs> you're not safe to be let out in your own, are you? Well, hark, who's talking? Every time I turn my back on you, your manager invites you away for the weekend. Ah. I wanted to talk to you about that. Ah, I wanted to talk to you about that, too. Oh? I'm beginning to think that the Honourable Rat-Face Ricketts fancies you. Yes, well, it's beginning to look like that, yes. Yes, which leads me on to my next point. You don't think I ought to go away on this weekend, do you? Are you mad? Of course you've got to go away. This is a prime opportunity. I know it's a prime opportunity. And I know who it's a prime opportunity for. Don't be silly. You can handle him. I've got every faith in you. Have you? Yes. Just a minute, what is this, this prime opportunity? And what's it got to do with me going away for the weekend? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. You see... Look, will you apologize to Teresa? Well, why should I? Because she's going to be here all weekend looking after the house while I'm away giving Desmond grounds for divorce. Are you still doing that? Yes, I've got no choice. If I don't, he loses his job and I get no maintenance. Well, I think you're mad. I wouldn't give him anything. I wouldn't give him a smell of the cat's litter. <laughs> anyway, you'll have to be friends with Teresa. Well, when is all this going to happen? This weekend. Oh. Belinda's away this weekend. Is she? Mm. Oh. Oh, perhaps you'd better not apologize to Teresa then. No, you change your mind like the wind, don't you, Louise? See, if you start apologizing and you let that smile out of its box... Which smile? You know very well which smile. That one... <laughs> Louise, don't be obs... Do you think I could possibly be unfaithful to Belinda with a woman who just pinched my office? How many times has Belinda been away for the weekend and left you all on your own without me next door to look after you? Stop that! Stop what? <laughs> You're contemplating already. You are actually thinking about what might happen. Don't be ridiculous, Louise. The thought is father to the deed. Watch. Which colour do you want next? Green. Green. <laughs> Good trick, isn't it? I suppose so. Shall I tell you how I do it? See, if you start apologising and things... Things what? You know, 
accelerate. Use the back room, not the big bed in the front room. Ooh. You'd better not. I agree. <laughs> Whatever it is, don't do it. Hello, Louise. Hi. What is it you'd better not do now? Apologize to Teresa. Who's Teresa? She's the woman who pinched my office. Louise thinks I'm going to have an affair with her. <laughs> with what aim in mind, may I ask? To get your office back. I thought you were going to look after office accommodation this weekend with rat faced rickets in Brighton. <laughs> uh, Louise? Yes? We're just going to have a couple of very personal minutes. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you want me to go, then? Please. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you want to see me pour three different colours from a bottle that only contains white lemonade? On the whole, no. <laughs> it was a stupid remark. I'm sorry. If you're going to be nice, that's not fair. I need notice of niceness when I'm going to have a row. Put that gin down. Come here. I haven't had anything to eat since one o'clock. Violent exercise is out. I want a cuddle, that's all. Mwah. How much do you want to borrow? <laughs> Look, Belle, I don't want you to go out of your way, you know, this weekend. I wonder if you could define out of your way a little more clearly. Well, you know, with, with rat face rickets to get me an office. Look me in the eye. What for? It's lie detector time. I am not lying. <laughs> what about? Well, anything, I think. No. All right, look me in the eye, then. <laughs> this isn't another ploy, is it? To let you stay at home all day and drink coffee with Louise. Look, if all I wanted to do was stay at home all day and drink coffee with Louise, would I be actively encouraging my wife? What, me? Yes, you, Belinda Braithwaite, local bank manager of impeccable reputation. So far. Right, so far. What do you mean, so far? <laughs> Nothing. Go on. I forgot where I was now. Oh, yes, right. Would I be actively encouraging you to have an affair with Ratface Ricketts just in order to get me an office? I mean, would I? Have an affair with? Did you say have an affair with? No, of course I didn't. Don't be ridiculous. You did, I just said, said have an affair with Barrington Ricketts to get you an office to, to go to work in. I said rat face Ricketts, as a matter of fact, and I was speaking metaphorically. And I don't want you having an affair with anyone. And why didn't you tell me that your bank pays my salary? Uh, well, I, 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 was, I was looking for the, the, the perfect opportunity. And when might that have been, may I ask? Preferably when you were fast asleep with, with your fingers in both ears. <laughs> did you get me this job? Uh, no. Look me in the eyes. <laughs> At least I don't think so. <laughs> either you got me the job or you didn't. It's simple. I'm either a kept man or I'm not. I didn't set out to get you a job. I did, though, didn't I? Well, that's certainly the impression I received. And I thought there was some question of you giving up work as soon as I was fixed up. I'm going to. When? You haven't even got an office yet. There you are, you see. Deep down, I'm nothing but a deadbeat. You're only a deadbeat if you think you're a deadbeat. All right, well, that's it. I passed the acid test. I don't just think I'm a deadbeat. I know I'm a deadbeat. <laughs> right, that's it. We can now apply the collective intelligence of both our brains to your problem. I'll be asleep. Let me know how it turns out, will you? Oh, good gracious. Is it morning already? <laughs> well, how do things turn out? Idiot. We've already established that. I don't need any reminding. You've really backed yourself into a bit of a corner, haven't you? It all started out so simply. He just asked me for my views on sexual harassment in the banking world. Are you for it or against it, do you mean? <laughs> Sorry. Then he asked me to jot down a few notes on the subject, which I did. And then he asked me to give a paper at a weekend conference. At which he will be present. And the worst thing of all is that I don't know whether I'm just being paranoid. Mm -hmm. For every word that has been exchanged on the subject has had a distinct and definite double meaning. But what, what, what if he hasn't got any intentions at all of trying anything on? Well, then everything will be all right, won't it? Or won't it? You know, because I will have proved that I am as big a sexist as any man I've ever met. What do you mean? 
Well, I will have assumed automatically that a man is going to turn out to be a ravening beast just because he's in the next bedroom to a female subordinate on a weekend conference. Yeah. And he has just promoted that said female subordinate. And was, in addition, responsible for getting the subordinate's husband quite a good job. Oh, well, I saw, I'd forgotten about that. No, you hadn't. Well, I was trying to. <laughs> is he really in the next bedroom? What? Rat-faced Ricketts. Is he in the next bedroom? It wouldn't surprise me. Right, that's it. Take a flannelette at nighty and a needle and thread. The chambermaid can sew you in every night. Chambermaid? Yes. When did you last stay in a hotel? When is he really in the next bedroom? Yes. Do you want me to come down with you? I can sort of blend into the scenery. There isn't any scenery in Brighton. It's all hotels and seafront and pebbles. Oh. And heavy breathing. <laughs> no, I've got to deal with this on my own. Yes, I know you have. Right, well, this is what you do. Make sure you're never alone with him. As soon as you get to the hotel, go straight to your room. Come out for the meetings, come out for the meals. Make sure you're with other people all the time. <laughs> I'm serious. Then the situation will never arise and you'll never be in an embarrassing situation on your own with him. That might be a little more difficult than you think. <laughs> Managers going to the same conference are required to use the same transport where possible. I see. At least you'll have the car for the weekend. Oh, good. It's very kind of you to lend me your wife for the weekend. Don't mention it. Be good. If you're not careful, I'll be more than good. I'll be terrific. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Barrington. Bye. So, Carl, uh, I think okay. I owe you an apology. apology. <laughs> Looks as if it's just the two of us. So it does. Coffee? Why not? Your place or mine? <laughs> Thank you.